we've brought to the tactics board here because we want to get Enda to show us what good forward play is about these days, especially good modern forward play. You're still playing with St. Vincent's at pretty much the highest level as well. So can you tell us, as a forward yourself, now this is the traditional 15, the way it's yeah. set out, how are the best forward lines operating? Um, most, most county teams now usually set up with, with two inside. Um, this, this guy, third man, comes out to the top of the D, most likely, or even joins the centre forward out here. The two wing forwards usually, like, it's a tortuous roll, they up and down all the time. They're like, they're like midfielders now at this stage, uh, in terms of creating that, that link from, from the, from defence into, into attack. And then you've got your four. This is usually the setup now. You've got your four forwards. Um, so it's like a box almost there. Yeah, look, you can, yeah, it's like, a, they're interchangeable, like, um, but it, it is like a box. So these two guys, you want to be going, laterally across the line you don't want to be what you call it coming coming towards the ball like the key principles what we've been taught is you want to be going towards the sideline you want to try and receive the ball going towards goal and you want to be trying to make your run across across the line so if you're getting that ball um Facing facing the line, it's not it's not a it's not a very. So the last line. thing you want is to get the ball. You're you're running out towards the sideline. You don't want to be receiving the ball, and you're carrying it towards the sideline because you're, yeah. you're running into you're no threat then. Yeah, look, a, a good example of of receiving the ball um, on the half turn was um, I think it was the Dublin Kerry game this year in the league. It was uh, I'm not too sure it was a Dean Rock or Cormac Costello got the ball into Paul Mannion, and literally it was a, he he put it in from here. It's about a 30 yard ball, and Mannion received it on the half turn facing his own goal and he got the goal out of it and you could actually see the panic on the co- uh, Kerry, Kerry's cornerback's face uh, They were kind of one on one at that stage yeah, as well Yeah one on one but the, the key word uh, w- was the, the kick pass into Mannion he, you know it was a perfect flight of ball Mannion facing his own goal on the half turn and he just literally uh, what, ran in 20 yards and buried it in the bottom corner so it was, it was a very very good goal uh, Bernard Brogan has, ta- has spoken over the years about how he has to stay close to goal and that he you have to be very disciplined and patient. So, I mean, you, you told me earlier but when we were looking at this that yeah. patience is a word that can... It, it's nonsense as well. Sometimes you hear people say, be patient in there. Mm. When is it nonsense and when does it make sense, like in well, Bernard Brogan's well, it's, case? It's the only line, really, you're relying on your teammates. Um, if, you're, if you're... Look, you can get very frustrated inside if, you, if you're losing the midfield battle or if the ball isn't... If, if it's coming in and if it's a miss, missed time ball or if it's not directed right into you. And I guess, you know... You, a good full forward usually the touches you're going to get is between 10 and 15 touches a game that's not a lot so whatever you do with them touches defines your game so you're relying on the ball that's coming into you you're relying on an awful lot of your teammates to get that ball into you so it's it, it, patience yes um, but I suppose Bernard at that stage in his career he was going to be given the benefit of the doubt as in he was a couple of all-stars at that, st- at that stage I'm sure and he, he could he was the final man to get that ball basically so he'd have he'd have the two guys out here receiving the ball linking up that play and Bernard is deadly from literally left or right foot he developed his, his, his left side very well get, receiving the ball on the loop and he's slotting it he's seen so many so many um, goals and points Bernard looping around and slotting it over the bar and even the two goals he got uh, got against us in the 2013 All Ireland final. He was literally he, he's a very good poacher. There's one literally a ball, a speculative ball coming into the square, and he he fisted it in, and then he waited. Bastard came right through the centre of our defence, and Bernard just literally waited, and he just it was a two on one, and he just panned it into the into the net. Tommy, did you want to say something? Yeah, just um, so that formation there with the four up top and you know the wing four is dropping. There's obviously a load of variations on it. So like. The way even you had the fours set up as a square there, you can do a diamond, you yeah. can do a straight line. Yeah. The um, nut as well. The nut is popular. Did you, yeah. you ever hug, call the nut? Literally, everyone, that was popular for a few years as well. Yeah. And what was the idea in terms of the ball being played in then to, to exploit the nut? Yeah, just, <laughs> <laughs> just basically. You have, you have so much space, like, so much space. And there'd be, not, uh, there'd be a basketball play there as well. Screen. In terms of screen yeah. Screening players and uh, basically so much space each side, you're, you're, you're running into that space. My question is kind of, um, so the flip side of that is that the other team are going to have bodies back. Yeah. So like you're the four up front, as you said, you're aligned on your teammates, you're aligned on delivery, the, the manner in which you get the ball in. 
How best, as a four, or whether it's two inside or whatever it is, how best can you negate, I'm not even going to say sweeper, but the extra bodies that are back there looking after you, how best can you take them out of the game, or what way are you going to try and get a little bit of space? So you're saying, usually we say the Blues are the defenders here, and you have your four up top, and um, you usually have a plus one here at the back, all right? So basically... uh, the corner forward will have to sacrifice his game. All right, one of the corner forwards. If you're seeing the ball coming up, coming up this line here, uh, coming up this side here. All right, we'll say the yeah the Reds are, are attacking. So you're you're seeing the ball coming up this side here. So this guy has to make that selfless run out towards the sideline. It's not the right run, but you're bringing hopefully you're bringing the two lads with you and it's leaving one on one inside. That's just it's just a dummy run and just leaving the other guy inside. Yeah, I've been I've been kind of throwing the full forward in the last couple of years. Yeah. And all you hear you hear it a lot. You have to make a number of runs before you get that ball, and it's it. Sometimes I think it's a bit of a cliche, but yeah. it's about making smart runs as well. Like when you were playing inside. Well, it, it, we were discussing this off air. Like it depends on on the skill set of that guy who's on the ball. So you're training with that guy, and the more contact you have with the with the lads uh, on the training pitch, the better, because you get to know their their strengths and weaknesses. So the guy on the ball may not have that in a skill set to to drill in a 30, 40 mm-hmm. yard ball into you. So you're going to wait. Obviously, as a young lad, and as you get older, you realise this, and you obviously have the patience, like Bernard said. But as a young lad, you're zipping around the place as a twenty-one, uh, twenty-one year, year old lad. Like so, uh, as you get older, you obviously you have to have that patience. There's a perfect example. Last one, you learn a lot from him. Uh, he came back from a broken leg, and he's been a completely different player. Andy Moore over the mm. last couple of years. Yeah. What would you say the biggest thing from playing alongside Andy and watching him is in terms of his own movement? His lateral runs, his he's constantly moving. He is. If you watch, shows on the board here. If you if you have Andy, like, let's say, Andy is literally. I mean, if you watch Andy on Saturday night, if you have a uh, player cam on him, like he's literally going across the line. He's trying to he's he's trying to trip his man up. Um, he's you know he'll have a nice little. I don't know, it's, um, Mick Fitzsimons on him now. This, but them two usually have a great battle. Mm. Uh, in the seventeen all Ireland final, watching watching them, the two of them go at it like it was it was really really good battle. But Andy's literally it's just his movement uh, off the ball is just so so good. And even there was a play against Kevin actually. So literally he was isolated inside, and we say Kevin obviously in blue here and the ball but he, we were coming Mayo were coming right through the middle and Andy basically the Cavan lad had him really really well covered and basically Andy literally went this way went back and then at the split second he came back he was pointing as he was going back this way he was pointing the other way yeah. so literally the ball came into him and he just fisted over the bear just he, he goes his runs two or three runs at a time to get away from his man and he's, that's why he's such, his main strength is what's Andy Moran's main strength his main strength is winning ball Th- that player cam is a bloody great idea because you really don't get it unless you're watching no, him live like, no. it, it looks like he's making it so simple but he's doing so much off oh, the he's ball do, yeah he's doing, he's doing a phenomenal amount of work off the ball to get out and again as I said like that 15, 15 touches for an inside guy is, is a very very uh, very good game uh, the midfielders you're talking now could be anywhere between 30 because it's gone so defensive it could be even 40 50 possessions now at this stage um, the middle third guys you're talking midfielders wing forwards centre forwards but the inside guys is still only at 15 touches and that's a very very good game Who's, uh, who are the best inside forwards do you reckon in the game right now Conor McManus surely up there Conor McManus yeah um well, Dean Rock, you wouldn't say he's necessarily closest to goal type guy as well. Actually, you were saying he's a small bit further no, out. No, like like the uh, Dublin are very good at, uh, we'll say, having having patience and and we'll say going around from going around from this side to the to the other side and and keeping the width and creating these channels up up al- along the D basically, and they leave that D open a lot of the time so they can run into it and run out of it again, and they're always moving. You don't see any dubs. We'll say. If the ball comes in this side, deep, they'll bring it around. And you see the other guys, the likes of McCaffrey, the likes of Finton, whoever's on the other side, they're having the patience because they've discussed it in their team meetings that, right, this is the pattern in play. The ball is going to be recycled around. We're going to keep our width and we're going to create that channel up the other side. Monaghan do that an awful lot as well and they have done over the last couple of years. Yeah, and um, yeah, but I, I I think Dublin are probably the best at it at Mine the moment. It, yeah. Yeah, so like, this is what they're doing: they get the ball here, bring it around, and wait, 
bring it along the line until somebody has a gap to go through. If someone somewhere. has it, yeah. They see a, a mismatch or they see two on one basically, and they'll run it then, and then they'll basically, and they, they're very good at doing the basketball play of screening the other guy. If I give it off to, we say, if someone's looping around me and I'm going straight towards goal, someone's looping around me here, I give it off, and I'm creating that screen then the for this guy, and I'm not doing anything, and he'll, he'll, he'll take a score then. So who is that best inside forward in the game right now? Um, you'd have to say Conor McManus. He's, he, like, he's phenomenal. He, he really is. Um, and the attention he gets, like, the, like against, I think it was a couple of years ago, he was, they were playing Dublin in, Crow, in Croker, and he brought the two, I don't know what two Dublin defenders were on him, but he absolutely brought them to the cleaners. I think he gave Davy Byrne 11 points that yeah. day. It was absolutely was outrageous. Davy Byrne from Olaf's, was he one of the... Oh, yeah. I thought there was two of them following him. There was then. two of them following him, and he literally... Destroy, like 11 points in an inter-county senior game is just phenomenal goal, especially two people on him. Um, I know, and that's the, but that's the thing as well about the marquee forward, like when you have the likes of a Jamie Clark back, like or a Conor McManus, they're going to tie up that best defender and with Monaghan, they need to have a couple of options this year, which they might have. 